All right, so we are trying to find the area between two curves where we're going to be given a graph of each curve and using that to determine the area between the two. So this is just an application where we want to set up our own definite integral. So one of the things when we're setting up our own definite integral is we want to follow this pattern where we are choosing the correct a to b. So looking at this integral here, a to b are the x values of intersection. So we're never going to set it up using y values. Always x values of intersection for the bounds. And when we set it up, we're going to do the upper function or upper curve minus the lower curve. So really the new part of this section is setting up our own function. So it's not any new antiderivative rules. It's not any new rules when it comes to plugging it in or anything like that. What's new is figuring out, first of all, what are the x values that we intersect at? And which one would we consider the upper curve and the lower curve on that interval that we're interested in? So again, this method is written here. Pick A and B. Let those be, again, the x values, never y's. We don't integrate with respect to y. We could. It's possible. That's totally fine. We're just not doing it in this class. And we set up upper function minus lower function with that dx on there, meaning respect to x. Looking at this first example, we want to find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of the equation y equals the square root of x and y equals x squared. So when we're trying to figure this out, we want to figure out, first of all, where do they intersect? So looking at this graph, I would argue that they intersect down here at 0 and up here at 1. But let's say you are just not comfortable with reading a graph and you don't feel like you can figure it out just by looking at it. If you're confused about intersecting, if you're looking and you're wondering, do these intersect? Plug them in and see if plugging in that x value gives you the same y value for both so that you know that they intersect there. So looking at this, let's say I'm not sure about 0. I would plug in 0 to both these. The first function is the square root of x, so I try to do the square root of 0. And the other function is x squared, so 0 squared. The square root of 0 is 0, and 0 squared is 0. So they have the same y value when they intersect at zero. So as long as they have the same y, they definitely cross there. If you're confused about one, you'd plug in one to both the square root of one and one squared. The square root of one is one and one squared is also one. So yes, they definitely intersect as long as they have the same y value. So those two x values that we guessed by looking at the graph, of 0 and 1 are definitely the two values where they intersect. Do you have to check them? No, but can you to double check that they definitely intersect with each other? Yes, they should just get the same y value out. So if one of them has a y value of 16, the other should have a y value of 16 if they truly intersect at that x value. So once you figure out the x values where they intersect, we are plugging in the upper curve minus the lower curve. So Let's say again, you're not a visual person and you are wondering which one of these is the upper curve? Which one's higher, the square root of x or x squared? So maybe just by guessing, I would think, well, probably x squared is higher than the square root of x. But say I'm not sure. Maybe that guess isn't even correct. So let's figure out which one's the upper curve. We would plug in Any x between the intersection 
to find the higher y. So for this graph, they're intersecting between 0 and 1, right? We already did our setup. We are looking between 0 and 1. And so if we want to figure out which one's higher, we're going to choose a value between 0 and 1 to plug into both. So I could test maybe x equals 0.5. That's between 0 and 1. So plugging into the square root of x, I'd take the square root of 0.5. And the square root of 0.5 in my calculator gives me about 0.7. It's 0 0.707. So about 0 0.71. And then if I plug in 0 0.5 to my other function, 0.5 squared gives me 0.25. So what's higher? Square root of 0 0.5 is 0 0.7. 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. So the square root function is the higher function. We're actually going to integrate this, so I'm going to write it as x to the 1 half. This is the upper function. Because when I plug in 0.5, I see this one's way up at like 0.7, whereas x squared is down at 0.25. So I wouldn't have guessed that the square root is higher than x squared, but on this interval, it is. That red graph of the square root of x is higher than the blue graph of x squared, just on this interval that we're interested in at least. So the square root of x, or x to the 1 half as my upper function, minus my whole entire lower function is just minus an x squared. Normally we would have to distribute and subtract every single term of the lower function, um, but for this one, there's nothing to distribute to. So now that I've done that whole new part, the setup, figuring out where they intersect, they intersect at 0 and at 1, they have the same y values, and then the upper function, testing any number between 0 and 1, I figured out that uh, the square root of x is actually higher than x squared on that interval. So that's my upper function minus my lower function. Now I'm ready to take a regular integral and plug in. So x to the 1 half, add 1 to it, you get 3 halves. And instead of 1 over 3 halves, x to the 3 halves, we're going to flip it to be 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, minus the integral of x squared, 2 plus 1 is 3. So we're going to have 1 over 3, x to the 3, and no plus c on this. We're going to use an evaluation bar. We're going to plug in from 0 to 1. So plugging in 1 to this, I'm going to do in parentheses 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 halves minus in parentheses 1 third, 1 to the third, and I'm going to just get 1 third. Minus when we plug in 0 to both of these terms, we actually get 0. So my answer is 1 third for the area between these two curves, which is about 0.3, or 0.3 repeating. One way I can check my answer is looking at the graph and seeing what the area looks like. Well, I'm stuck in a box that is a 1 by 1. So this whole box's area is 1. Well, we don't nearly cover that area with the area between two curves. We don't even cover half of it, I wouldn't say. So I would say my answer is somewhere between 0 and 1, naturally. Um, but I would say, realistically, looking at this box, it doesn't even look like half of the box is filled up. So somewhere between maybe 0 and 0.5. And definitely between 0 and 1, because it's stuck in a 1 by 1 box. So that answer of 0.3 looks reasonable to me. Um, and so there's our exact answer for the area between two curves, but you can definitely just use some boxes like we talked about with the Riemann sum kind of and figure out if your answer makes sense. If I got an answer of like 23, I would know it wasn't right because we're stuck in a one by one box. The answer of 0.3 or one third looks great though.